are we concerned? Like, only because if this was a game in isolation, we'd all go, yeah, we weren't very good. We're still top of the group. You know, we'll probably still qualify, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But factor in the Luton performance as well. And the fact you've alluded to it a couple of times, Jay, we've seen this type of performance from Liverpool in the not too distant past last season, especially. Are we concerned by what we've seen tonight? I'll come to you on it first, Chloe. Um, I am a little bit, I won't lie. Luton, I think we all kind of sat here afterwards, after the dusk had settled and said, OK, you know, these games can happen. Uh, as long as the sporadic and you know yeah. everyone can have an off game to go back to back and have that off game against a team that you should be beating um, and you should be beating both of them to be perfectly mm. honest uh, the fact that this game isn't in isolation it's two games back to back and we put out a good enough side there like we put out a decent number of uh, players and it was the performance for me Luton with everything going on, um, especially with with Diaz and things, I could kind of isolate that game. I thought I still saw desire and and you know players wanting and and you know trying to make tackles. Today there was players jumping on a fifty fifties, not winning ground duels, which is the very basics of football. Um, looking like they were just they weren't really up for it and they were a little bit intimidate, intimidated and I don't like that it, it was a team that kind of felt sorry for themselves at, at moments in that game um, and that is the problem I have with it and what makes it even more worrying for me is that Luton and Toulouse are not massively physical sides and yet we've been dragged to their level and they've bullied us. We've been bullied back-to-back games. We've now got Brentford, who are an extremely physical side, who from every set piece will have you off like they did us last season. Yeah, they um, and they will make that game scrappy and they'll batter you and they'll bully you. And I am now worried because we're now going to face uh, Brentford and the, if we play like that, they will bully us and play us off the park. Mm. Um and you can't have three three losses or three really bad performances back to back to back going into an, a, an international break, especially when you then face Manchester City. The other thing I have a slight problem with is some of the players who were awful in the Luton game, where we all were like, oh, maybe they've played too much football, maybe they've done this, maybe they've done that. They looked awful tonight yeah. again. That's the thing, isn't it? Because obviously I think one of them in particular is Dom Sobersley. And we've all sung his praises this season. He's been absolutely outstanding. He's not really had a bump in the road since he came in at Anfield, it's fair to say. He's just hit the ground running, turned up and gone, ah, don't worry about this, lads, I'm boss. And he has been. But he hasn't been now for a week because I probably factor in his Bournemouth performance in that as well in the Cup. I don't think he was brilliant there either. But I wonder, Jay, I'll come to you on it, like, Bad results can happen. We've seen that down the years of football, but this is a couple of pretty bang average performances now in a row from Liverpool. And we've all been sort of waxing lyrical about Liverpool 2.0 and how exciting it is and how sort of reinvigorated you and Klopp looks and all that sort of good stuff, real positive. It's been a really positive start to the season, but all yeah. of a sudden <clears throat> we've all gone, oh, it's a bit eye-opening, a bit of a wake-up call, whatever you want to describe it as. But Chloe's right. We need to put it right on Sunday because if all of a sudden you do go into that international break and you're really dwelling on your last few games and going oh we've come a bit yeah. sticky patch here it's massive for Liverpool now on Sunday isn't it that we can get rid of these last two performances and say oh, don't worry about it bit of a blip whatever everything's going to be fine yeah absolutely you can't be going into that City game if we're poor again this weekend then people are going to be worried aren't they um, I think there's a few concerning things I think the the Luton game there were bits that reminded me of like Bournemouth away last year mm-hmm. where not created uh, that can happen Luton were always going to do well against a bigger team I thought at, at some point at Kenilworth Road it, unfortunately it was us but we didn't lose the game we'd have lost that game last year been poor again tonight my concerns are left back I think is a concern because I think a lot of people would say well we'll we'll play Gomez at left back against City and I like that because he's you know more defensively solid great athlete and all that but then there's a lot of cutting inside against Luton that didn't really look ideal then you play Simicast there no one's really everyone's pulling a face at that suggestion so that's a concern some of the midfield stuff, you know, I was I was really looking forward to seeing Endo and McAllister mm. in the six and eight respectively today. Endo's gone off at half time and probably should have been sent off. McAllister not not look very good either. He was better in the six, I wonder if you yeah, yeah. yeah. And now now we've got Jones 
loves a little injury, as we were saying before the game. Gravenberg is is out for I don't know how long he's going to be out for. So then you just see these little things creeping in now, where it's like, you know, Endo doesn't look like somebody that you're going to start against Manchester City. Not that maybe he never was when he when you know when, when we signed him. Because McAllister's had criticisms over his uh, over his performances at six. It's a game where it's one of the few games in the Premier League where we're probably going to have to be doing a lot of defending. So it's it's the it's the sternest test going yeah. into City with some of those midfield options either injured or not quite firing or not quite on it. So mm-hmm. Gakpo, I think, is another concern. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe Salah might be a concern at this point. Yes, yeah, Salah hasn't played well. Yeah, his he, for the last, good. Even in the Everton game, yeah. he doesn't do yeah. much and then scores the goals. And that's the, the problem there is that, <laughs> sadly, like I think we've all spoke this season about how good it is, the fact that we don't always have to rely on yeah. Salah because we very much did last season. Mm. But the problem is... Darwin Nunes right now isn't always reliable. Luis Diaz hasn't played enough football. Diego mm-hmm. Jota's probably the, the most reliable there right mm-hmm. now for yeah. me for a goal. I um, and he, he's not nailed on to start every game. So actually, you need Mo Salah to step up. Um, and I, 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 tonight we created one big chance in 100 minutes mm-hmm. against Toulouse. Um, and a Toulouse that, that created plenty of chances. Yeah. And that is a big, big problem. Liverpool ran out of ideas tonight. Yeah. They ran out of ideas against Luton and Brentford are going to make it horrific for you to try and break them down Mm -hmm. Um, so the attack is a little bit of a worry right now for me but you know look Liverpool Liverpool might be fine they might just bounce back and and, 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 and Mo Salah all of a sudden might be unbelievable again because that's what Salah does but they are things that you've got to think about it's it's a test for this Liverpool side I mentioned it earlier so far it's been relatively smooth sailing albeit there's been loads of adversity in games but we've managed to overcome all of that and even the Tottenham game which we lost obviously there was a reason behind it it almost galvanised us and said it's it's them against us type mentality you know what I mean that siege mentality and Liverpool like I say are pretty much sort of navigated everything that's come their way so far and then all of a sudden these last couple of games you've gone oh I'm not I don't like that I don't like that I don't like that and you just look at what's ahead in terms of the fixtures and you go god if that's still happening and that's still happening that looks really tricky yeah. so I get it I do and especially when you go to Luton and Luton we're expected to be the whipping boys of the Premier League it might not turn out that way they might turn out being okay and yeah. no, like they're very they, much going to be that way well they know everyone expected to get less than points in Derby didn't they they're going to do better than that and you look at Toulouse tonight I think 14th in Liga lost to Le Havre on the weekend and you just expect to turn up there and go we're Liverpool we'll just win but then you sort of factor in the fact that we're obviously not in our best moment right now and they are bang up for it I mentioned earlier they go up 10-15% whatever it is there are potential factors I'm not making excuses but there are potential factors and Liverpool could just beat Brentford at home on the weekend and then we just go do you know what yeah. we could be level on Punctual City we're still top of the Europa League group we're through in the Carabao Cup etc etc yeah yeah the other, the other thing I, I would say I was slightly worried about that game is we've spoke about how many leaders we have on a pitch and in that second half the organisation I didn't see a single leader I didn't see anyone no. who, who really stood up and was shouting at each other and trying to help each other mm. and like telling each other to, to get up for it to yeah. you yeah. know put in a tackle if, if you don't go in for it fume at each other there was no organisation at all we got pulled apart yeah, it was bad. Um, so that that is that that's another slight worry. Hopefully, you know everything will be fine. Um, but it goes to show that the players who Liverpool fans wanted in terms of the areas we want the DM and we want the left side of centre back. Yeah, and those are the areas that game in we we worry about every single yeah, game. Yeah, absolutely nothing changed in my mind. I dare I must say, um, as people probably know from listening to me on a weekly basis. <laughs> 